Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Sean Robinson back on the show. Sean is actually doing a series. He has his own podcast with us, and he has a series of podcasts that he's going to be doing. He's going to be hitting a lot of important topics, and today he's going to be talking about work-life balance. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to DMAWorld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency that helps small businesses grow into large businesses. They believe that people shouldn't get scammed for tens of thousands of dollars when you can have good marketing consultant for a reasonable price. So contact dmaworld.com and they're there to help you. So Sean, you know, we were talking previously and you were talking about, you know, some it's very hard for people to balance their lives sometimes because they have, you know, you're, you're, you're a parent, you have a job, you know, you have kids, you have, you know, all these different things going on in your life. And, you know, sometimes people focus on the wrong things and life can get kept very chaotic. Now you were talking about, you, you have, you know, worked on work-life balance and you've ha- found really good techniques techniques and strategies that you can apply to your life that could actually help people have a healthy, happy, and productive life and actually balance their, their, their personal lives with their work lives. So can you tell us a little about that? And, and if you want give a little bit of an introduction to people who didn't maybe hear the first podcast of who you are and what you do. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, thanks, Stacey, for having me back. Uh, I'm excited to get uh, into this series and, and to share a few different topics. Um, the last time we talked about uh, where I used to be in, in around the end of 2020, uh, found myself in, a, in an awful spot physically and mentally, uh, 320 pounds, just awful habits, eating too much, really my relationship with alcohol, just a, just a whole lot of things that had compounded to a position that uh, I found myself at pretty well, my, my rock bottom, I'll call it. And um, learning, starting to 2021, New Year's resolution, learning different things about habits and structure. Uh, I removed alcohol or, uh, you know, I was brushing my teeth more, just lots of different things that I was trying to, to test these habit theories and lifestyle change theories. And fast forward three years, I, I've been able to compound quite a bit with that growth and lose 100 pounds, change my attitude, a, a lot of different things that that the baseline is the same or, or similar for each thing I've been able to kind of change. And yeah, work life, work life structure has been uh, a big one and, and paying attention to the habits that I I had before and learning how to change them and do different things around um, uh, specifically that as well. Now you were talking about work-life balance. Like why is that topic so important to you? Why, you know, you you really feel strongly about it. Can you explain to the audience why you feel work-life balance is, is such an important aspect to everybody's life? Um, I, I think it's important because we we all have to work. The the the, the way that it used to be where, you know, uh, if you're co-parent you've got family your one parent can stay home watch the kids the other parent has to work like we just can't live like that anymore like most most relationships both parties have to work and you know we've got costs for the kids and daycares and camps and different things and and while we're trying to work we're trying to become better we're trying to develop and trying to get you know these great jobs and high paying jobs and all these things and those things take away from that time we spend on ourselves and with our families and our relationships. And as we could develop both parties, there's a lot of time that, that we don't have together and a lot of relationships that suffer because of it. And, you know, you were saying it, you have like different things that you could do because I, I find it, you know, I know so many people, you know, and I even went through it myself where you're trying to, you know, you're trying to reach your goals at your work and you're trying to get things done. And, you know, you, you invest all this energy into your job. Then you come home and you're exhausted and you find yourself not spending an adequate a time with your partner. You're not, you're not, you don't have the energy to really give as much 
to your children. And sometimes people are so exhausted that, you know, they, their weekends, you know, is a time for new, but that, you know, some people find that it, it's very hard to enjoy their weekends because they're so exhausted from the whole week. So it's like, if you, if you overwork yourself, you're affected in your personal life. And then if your personal life is affected somehow, you know, you bring that to work and then your work life is being affected and you're, you know, and people notice it after a while because your behaviors change, your, your temperament might change, your moods might change, and you might not be able to get enough of things done that you're supposed to get done. So it's a, it's a, it's a circle, it's a battle, you know, and, and it never ends. So how do you break it? How do you get to the point where you could actually balance have you know an, an adequate balance between the two and live a, a healthy ha happy and productive life i think the first thing is is we've got to determine what it is that is important to us that we're working on is is it important to us to be taking these courses or is it important for us to be working on a b and c item all at the same time when we can take each of those things and break them into smaller parts. Maybe we work on a course on, uh, let's say, time management, and that's that's important to us right now. So I'm going to work on this a little bit in the in the background, and we fit a certain amount of time, a couple of days a week, on that that item instead of doing you know time management and budgeting and uh, relationships. Say so if 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 all, all three of those things are important and we work on them at the same time, each of those things is going to take a certain amount of time. So if we do that with everything that we're working on, if we take that that same amount of time and give it to um, one item, and then we have other time to spend on, you know, relationships with our kids or uh, sitting down and reading or going out with, with uh, your partner, it just in determining what's important to you and, and scheduling that amount of time, leaving the other things as say the next phase. So once you finish working on item A to, for, uh, for a few weeks or however long you need to be committed to it, then you can fit another item in. And it, we want everything right away. We want everything right now. But if we can figure out a way to break it down these smaller places and, and carry it over a longer period of time, we'll still get the same amount done. We'll just be a lot better with the time we've got do you know any any techniques and how people can actually, um, you know, start to manage their time better? A lot of people I see, you know, get caught up with doing things that are meaningless, you know, and and uh, and they don't get. And then all of a sudden they say, "Oh my God, I I got to get this done." And oh my God, I didn't I didn't get this, you know, done, you know, in my personal life. And and then it's like they're they're scraggling to try to get things done, always always because they're they're not their time their time is an equally spread out in a productive manner you know to people it can easily go on to facebook let's say and and then they they before they know it they've been on it for like 45 minutes an hour just like scrolling and looking at friends and pictures and stuff like that and that's an hour of time that you could have used in in an area that is more beneficial to your life so how do people break those habits how do you how do you you know is there any way that you suggest to, to manage your time better? Do you, should you write it down, have a schedule, or is there some, some way of, you know, of, of managing your time? That's really a productive way of doing it. I think the first step is awareness. Um, just, and, and if that's documenting in a notes app or, or something, if, if you know, you spend so much time, um, you can, you can really start to to pay attention to it, be aware of it, to to be able to change it. Uh, there's a lot of different apps, and I I don't have one off the top of my head, but you can get different uh, productivity apps that pay attention to that, or that will basically give you a second step to to log in to say, you know, are you sure you want to do this right now? Or they'll give you a timer for different apps to say, okay, you you've been on this enough, it's time to go back to what you're doing. But awareness of the time you're spending on certain things, and that could include things you don't realize that you're spending, you know, X amount of hours per week on, you know, these cell phone games or different uh, apps that aren't, aren't very productive. Yeah. You know, you still need to have your leisure time, but being aware of how long you're spending on them is is a big deal, too. Right. And 
um, uh, one thing that you could do to get away from it once once you start to realize that you're spending all this time on certain things and it doesn't even have to be you know phone related stuff it could be whatever in your house or whatever with your kids or you know yourselves it's like you know you could try to be more productive with what what you're doing like if you want to be more active and you you don't have time to be more active or you're saying you don't have more time but you've got this favorite show you're watching why can't you go on the treadmill or you know if you have one or do something like that at the same time walk right. while you watch your show and then you're getting that exercise in while you're doing this this other thing that's important to you or maybe you try to fit more time in after dinner so clean up and lunches and all the things that might fill your evening maybe you right after dinner you go for that walk so you're getting yeah. a lot of benefit from just deciding to go do that and then you come back and the rest of your evening is taken up with the things that you're you're so busy with right and that that's an excellent point i think it you know an, an app would be a great idea because even like on my Apple watch, I have, you know, I have like notifications and it will tell me when, you know, have you done this, you know, or, you know, or please stand up, you know, you haven't been walking enough all day, you know, like, and, you know, it just gives me little tidbits of little advice, you know, throughout the day about either time management, exercise or things like that. Sometimes we have to be reminded, I think, because sometimes we lose track, you know, of what's important. And I think that goes in all aspects of our life. We just lose track of what's important. We get so caught up in the moment that we don't look at the whole big picture. And I, I think that's so important. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, it is so easy to get caught up in in something and lose track of time. And, you know, you may want to have this other thing done, but you've, you've then spent so much time on Facebook or whatever. And, and we don't get that time back. So to be aware of it, and to just stop it all together like maybe you i know a lot of people have taken breaks from social media for you know a day a week a month or whatever yeah and and, and that might be a hack that changes the habit for you changes the lifestyle you have of that relationship with that item to j then just come back after you know whatever amount of time 30 days even to just come into it with a different tactic right yeah. maybe you then refocus and say Hey, I'm only going to do this, or I'm only going to follow this because I know the benefit I get from it. And coming back into it, you can say, I'm only going to do it for this amount of time. And yeah. you're aware, you're aware of, of making sure that that's all you do with it. I think that's a great idea because even myself, I had cut down on, on looking at social media and I don't go on it as much anymore. And I found that I, I became so much more productive by not scrolling through the social media and spending so much time, you know, I, I use it to more productive manners, you know, to more productive things. And I got more things done, which kind of relieved the stress in my life as well. Because when you're, I think, you know, stress is, is, you know, when you don't get the things you need to get done, you know, or you're stressed because, you know, you come home and, you know, your partner is, is not happy because you're coming home all stressed and tired and you can't spend adequate enough of time, you know, that stress that you have is, is affecting you. And not only is it affecting people around you, but it's affecting you, you know, physically and, and emotionally. And people don't realize like 70% of illnesses are caused by stress and you could open yourself up to so many different things. It's so important to try to, like you said, manage your time and try to do things because not only is time management great to be more effective and productive, but it also, I think, relieves that stress in your life. It also helps you enjoy life more and maybe focus more on the now and, and the things around you that mean so much. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. It, it It's all about, um, and, and it's not something to stress about, making sure you have to have every single thing in that calendar or, or in your schedule. But if you block a bank of time for, productive side business or productive family time or, or budgeting or whatever, and you, you book that in your schedule, then you, you don't have to set that for you know, a three hour block because right. that's a lot of pressure. And there's a lot 
in there where you're like, oh, I've got three hours. I can do Facebook for a bit. You know, it's being more focused on like, I'm going to spend an hour focused time on this item. Yeah. And then I'm going to give myself that break in between to be able to do some stuff that, that I wanted to do around the house. Or, you know, I'm going to bl block off the afternoon because my kids are going to come home from school and I know I want to do this with them. And then um, we're going to go and do this walk and dinner and you can kind of put that in your schedule. And then once you get to a point, you can book that rest time because rest time is important too. Yeah. Because if, if you don't, if you're not intentional with that time, you may not get it. Right. So exactly. And then actually holding yourself to, to do that when, when you see it pop up in your schedule and, and you can set all the alerts and, and notification alarms and whatever that yeah. when that time comes up, for an hour i'm just going to read this book and, mm -hmm. and not not do anything um the other thing that that's kind of a hack too is i think we're so quick to 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 say that we're not a morning person or we're not an evening person or just excuse our our schedule because of yeah. what we're used to doing but there's a lot of good resources and, and even books that, that i've read including like the, the 4 a.m fix and the 5 a.m club and different these different things where they they talk about how productive sorry the four percent fix and the 5 a.m club if you can use that morning time when maybe you're you have kids and, and you don't have anything because they sleep to a certain point so you get that hour or so in the morning yeah for to yourself even if that is rest time for you to wake up and have your coffee or whatever and, and drink right. yeah or read your books or you know just just spend time if you want it on facebook but at least you get that out of your way first thing and then yeah. the whole rest of the day can be used for what you want it to or something else. That's a great idea. You know, I, I think that's so important. And, and I do have friends that put alarms up for everything. And sometimes I'm I'm with them. I'm like, oh my God, another alarm, but it works for them. It, you know, as much as it might be annoying for me, it works for them. It's like, you know, if I didn't have these alarms, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so organized and get the things I need to get done because, you know, they'll have a different sound coming on for different things. And they know right away that, okay, it's time for this. It's time for that. And uh, so it it is important, you know, and I, I think it is good to like, you know, when people say, no, I'm not a morning person. Well, you can be, you know, and mm -hmm. never say don't, you know, say do, you know, don't say can't say can, you know, because we're, we're capable of doing whatever we want. The problem is, is some people just don't want, you know, and so they make excuses up, you know, but, yeah. you know. The point is, is if you really want it, if you really want work-life balance, if you don't want to feel so stressed, if you want to be productive, then you start to have to make changes like the changes you're mentioning, because, you know, life actually will be a lot better. And I think focus and clarity comes in and, you know, and happiness too, you know, because we all want to be happy. Well, having work-life balance, I think brings happiness into your life because you're balanced, you're focused, you're, you're clear-minded because everything is, is, is working in a flow, you know, a nice consistent mm -hmm. flow. Yeah. And, and it's, it's about having, yeah, having that balance and realizing what you're doing that's not productive like i used to spend a lot of time playing these these cell phone games and you, you get this game and you've got so much time that this 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 item in the game is it has to elapse before you're getting the next level or the next yeah. piece or the thing built or whatever version of that right and not only do these things cost you money if you want to you know add a bunch of money to it to mm -hmm. speed this time up but yeah it is such a waste of time like you're like i was not productive at all because i kept going back to an abc game that i was playing right and staring at my phone and then all the social media stuff so just finding out what things i was doing that yeah. weren't helping me that were we were wasting and just getting rid of them yeah like any any habit because it was a habit for me for a while it was just like getting rid of it deleting it not coming back to it and replacing that with something else right be, be it be it going for a walk or being go play with my kids or be it reading something else like taking that thing away and replacing it with something more productive for the same amount of time exactly and, and once i did that more and more once i could see the growth coming from the thing i had replaced it with it made me more and more intentional not to go back to it, not to right. re download that game or not to download a similar one or, or whatever that version is for people. It was like seeing that growth, seeing that and feeling how much 
better I felt doing the new item uh, yeah. was, was really productive. Yeah, I think that's very important. And what's your advice for people about breaking bad habits? Because I think, you know, one of the biggest struggles is that people get into a habit of, okay, I'm going to do this at this time, I'm going to do this at this time. And, you know, and they have this in their head, they have a mentality, like, let's say, you know, when I get up, I'm going to have a cup of coffee, you know, and, and okay, you know, after 15 minutes, I'll have my second cup of coffee, like they and some people create bad habits for themselves. And they do that throughout the day. And sometimes for people, people, it's a struggle to break those bad habits. Do you have any suggestions for people about breaking bad habits? There's a lot of different things, but ba uh, the easiest thing is once you're aware of that habit, um, then we're not talking something like smoking or drinking because there can be a bit more involved. But yeah, if you're doing something like you're waking up and you've got to go have that coffee first, I'm a coffee drinker. I appreciate that. But you can start to do something smaller. You can start to, you know, once you wake up, you're not going to have that coffee for half an hour. Right. Okay? Maybe, maybe you set a, a timer or maybe the, uh, and in that half an hour, you want to drink more water, right? right? There's a lot of stuff that says you should, first thing you should drink in the morning's water, or maybe there's a lot of things too about just going out and getting some of that fresh air. So yeah. maybe instead of just running to that coffee, pot or using that time it takes to make it and i know the keurigs and everything it's a lot smaller than uh, making a pot but just maybe you wake up and you you set that timer so you go out and do a half an hour of, of fresh air or or you just it's just stretch right yeah just get down on the floor do some yoga stretch meditate use that time for something else and then maybe that half an hour in the morning becomes 45 minutes or an hour and and i realize we get up we go to work but you can get your, you can get up earlier. You can start to use that, that same, same concept of instead of setting your alarm for an hour earlier, because that's going to be a lot more difficult. And I hit a snooze a bunch of times, right? Just get, just get up 15 minutes earlier, just get up 10 minutes earlier. And then after you've done that for a week or two, set it for another 10 minutes earlier. So after the course of a couple of months, you're now getting up that hour or hour and a half earlier, and you're, you're not drinking that coffee right away or whatever it is you're doing, you know, you, you start, Start to do this in small steps so right. that it, it makes it a lot easier. Um, James Clear in Atomic Habits talks about this, uh, among other things, but using small pieces, adding to small pieces um, as far as changing habits is, is the best way for us to do it. Personally, I found that, but I also needed to, to track it. So mm -hmm. if I was going to not, not do something or if I was going to say brush my teeth twice a day, I was writing that on the calendar check mark top of the calendar and bottom of the calendar so i did it morning and night every single day i would do that and then after 100 days um of tracking as i learned 100 days for changing lifestyles it was it was like i'm going to stop tracking it and see and 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 it sticks there's yeah some things like that that it, it'll stick and it just becomes a part of you and if the 100 days you know isn't enough if you go to 101 days you don't check it it just you just have to mark it then mark it there's right. nobody telling you you have to do it one way or another. A lot of this stuff is just finding out what works for us. Right? Exactly. What, what of these things can I try? What of these things that I have tried are working? And and don't do it for you know one day or ten minutes. Commit to a period of time. Commit to that thirty days. Yeah. Sixty days, a hundred days, and just keep going through it. And then after you've given yourself a good amount of time reevaluate and say, you know, is this something that I do want to do? Do I appreciate? Do I need to change it? Can I add to it? And just continue to do that. The years, the months, uh, everything like time passes by so quickly. These days will pass quickly. And you'll look back, you're like, wow, I've done this thing for a third of a year already, or right. I've done this the entire year. And I feel great. Or, you know, if I should really do it this way, because I just think it'll be a lot better if we don't allow ourselves to change. If we don't allow ourselves to try these things, we'll never get to a point where we know they do or don't work for us. Right. And I, I think it's important to just, you know, a lot of people 
fear change, but sometimes you have to realize that in order to conquer change, you have to face it and, and change is a good thing. And, you know, sometimes we, when we, when we try to focus on change and, you know, it's very scary for people because they don't know what's going to happen. Will I fail at it? Well, will I like the person that I become, you know, and sometimes, you know, you have to just like over, just overcome it, face it and, and do it. And, you know, I think for people, you know, changing their lifestyle, changing their habits and changing the way they do things is, is scary for a lot of people because they're scared it might not work. It's sc they're scared, you know, what's going to happen. But what's your advice for those people who who fear that change? I think naturally we we fear that we're going to become completely different people, that we're going to like get a lobotomy or something and just not be who we are. And we'll yeah. always be who we are. We'll always be a core of, of what we what our values are and what we believe in and, and who we become. But if we don't want to be the kind of person that overeats or, you know, snacks on sugars and bags of cookies every night, yeah. then we can we can be aware of that. We can be cognizant of, of what we're doing that we don't love about ourselves. And we can work on changing that and still be the people that we are. We're not going to, you know, lose a bunch of friends and lose a bunch of people and have everybody mad at us. If we decide we want to work on ourselves. Right. And just knowing that we are not going to change the entirety of who we are by modifying a few things we're working on, yeah. I think is, is the biggest thing the biggest thing that uh, we need to remember. Right. Because no matter what changes we make in our life, we still are the same person inside. And if we don't like, if we change something and we don't like the way it's applying to our life, we always can go back or we could try an alternative. So it, nothing is ever permanent. And I think people have to realize that. I think it's a, you know, it, it's, it's healthy for people to realize that, you know, you can change and, but you know what, if you don't like it, then you could change back or ch do something different. And if you fail, I don't believe that it, you know, when, when you try something, if it doesn't work out, I don't consider it failure because I feel like, you know what, you had the courage to try. And, you know, so, so it's not failing. It's just didn't work for you. It's, it's just not the right thing for you. And then maybe thinking of different ways, different things you could do in your life, you know, but I think it's so important for people to, to get that, that balance in their life. And if you had to give some people like some tips, like what, what are some important tips that you can give people to, to try to get them on the right track from going from a life that's not balanced to a life where they can slowly take those baby steps and become balanced. Um, well, I think first, just to add to, to what you're saying, I listened to Alex Hormozzi talk about um, some of some of that lifestyle change and 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 some of of that growth that we do. And and his point is, if we try something and fail, we will never be the same as the person we were before we tried it. We will always learn. We will always grow yes. because if it's something we've learned uh, that we like or we, that we don't like we will never be the same. So, right. um, and I'm paraphrasing and probably ruining the way he said it, but basically his point was that we'll never be the same people that we will always be better than we were because we've either learned oh, good or bad. Yeah. Um, and then, so tips to, to change, I think is, is, is just determine what it is you're working on is what you're doing going to help you get there and, and make the changes that you need to. Um, when I was working on becoming from, you know, my electrical in the field, because I'm an electrician and mm -hmm. I wanted to be more in the estimating and project management side, I started taking courses. These courses were to be done like on my own. I decided to do it. But so uh, in the evenings, it was self-learned courses, to, you know, after the kids went to bed, I'd spend right. an hour on it and and get through an hour and just do that few couple times a week all of a sudden I'm finishing these courses and getting some of these certificates and and this wasn't like trying to add a full day or week or program into my already busy schedule it was yeah. just just taking it apart so if you if you want to work on something your 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 development for your work or for home or for your 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 side things it's it's 
try to do things that you can fit into that kind of schedule. Maybe you can't commit to a full semester or two or a full year of, of, you know, a program, but you can commit to a self-taught program or that you can spend in that kind of time. Or maybe, maybe it is just a weekend course and you can find something that's split over a couple of days. So it's yeah. a Saturday, a couple of days a month. There's a lot of different ways to do to do this training, or if it's not training, if it's, if it's, you know, working out or fitness or whatever it is you're working on, yeah. the best tips is to just find something that works for you. Find a way to add these things into what you're working on that, that work with the schedule you have already. If you, if it doesn't work with the schedule you have already, I think it's going to be too drastic and it may not work. You may not right. be able to commit to it for, for a period of time that, that will change your lifestyle it will be too difficult and you'll get rid of it. So if getting up a half an hour earlier and working to that point gives you a chance to walk a half an hour before your, your day starts. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, work that in how you yeah. will. But if, if you can't do it in the morning and you have to do it after dinner, or maybe your, your partner, you can spell off. So you, you, the kids go to bed and it's your turn tonight. You're going to walk around the block and then, you know, my, my turn the next night, it's find a way to make it work with your, life and then it, yeah. sh it, it should be easier to to be uh to, to stay with it and keep going right i like those tips a lot i think that's really 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 good tips to you know to give somebody for obtaining work life life balance now can you tell people some of the things that you offer you have your book and you offer some services what are some things that you do and where can people find you uh, the easiest is my website, seanrobinson.ca. Um, I'm behind it, developing it all the time, adding uh, a lot of content. Um, and I wrote my book. It's self-published uh, about my journey through not drinking and sobriety. Uh, it was it was uh, quite a journey for me. We talked a lot about it on the last episode. I highly recommend it. And it, it was a it was a vulnerable place for me it was my journal to to go through the journey of of changing these habits and this person i thought i was um i've got uh, video content i put out on tiktok and youtube it's a lot of motivational it's it's different things i'm working on different things i've learned that i'm sharing for that person i used to be and and i know it's it's all relative content it's common and there's a lot of stuff that i'm picking up in the time i'm spending on this development and on this journey and and if there's anybody that can that can take anything from it, um, it's it's why I'm doing it. And if you go to my website and you want to ask me questions, you want to reach out, you want uh, some more context, there's a contact me page there that comes to me directly. And uh, I'll definitely be responding to anything that comes in to try and, and help out. Now, are you currently doing any coaching or maybe you plan to do coaching in the future? Um, I'm doing some unofficially with with some some people that have reached out and and just really gave me some feedback that i uh, have really liked it's it's something i didn't expect just the just these messages i'm getting and people working on their own versions and working them through that so i'm unofficially doing some some coaching work and and i do think that uh, that's where uh, i'm going to progress to i think there's definitely enough that uh, i've been able to get through on a personal level that um I can, I can speak to, and I can encourage, and I can, I can give that feedback. So um, I, I do believe that, that it will be in my future. And, and then I, I'm actually looking into doing a bit of an online, um, I don't want to say course, but maybe a bit of a workshop seminar mm -hmm. that, uh, that can speak to these changing habits and can speak to this like work-life balance and just transformation that, that I've been able to achieve that I know is possible for anybody that wants to do it. That sounds very exciting. That sounds like great goals for 2024. Now, if people wanted to talk to you after, you know, hearing what you've had to say and, and from your first series and now your second series, if they wanted to maybe, you know, schedule any type of coaching, can they go on your website to contact you and maybe suggest, you know, and ask you uh, to set up, you know, maybe a time to talk to you or ask you? Yeah, questions? definitely. On my website, there's a contact me section. Uh, if you just click the tab, fill out that form, it comes to, to my email directly and, and we can get involved that way. Definitely. 
Oh, that sounds awesome. Today has been amazing. I, uh, you know, I, I feel like work-life balance is so important and it's a topic that so many people struggle with and you provided so many great tips today. And I just thank you so much for, you know, um, you know, sharing all these tips on your uh, podcast series. This has been an amazing um, podcast. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to help so many people out there because they need help with when it comes to work-life balance. There there's so many people out there. There's hundreds and thousands of people who struggle each day with trying to balance their lives. And these tips, I think, will help many people out there. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate being here. And and I think once we're aware of, of what we're spending our time on and, and how we feel about the different things we're, we're doing, and we can start to you know remove the things we don't love, the things that aren't productive, and start to add some things that, that give us the direction we want to go. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing how much you could elevate your, in your, you know, in life when you are balanced and how happy you could be when you're balanced. I think it's, it's so important. Thank you so much for coming on this show. This has been an amazing podcast. Thank you. Thank you.